Welcome to the Marriage and Motherhood Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Perda. I'm a life and marriage coach for moms, wife, mom of three, and I'm also an Aries, and for my fellow human design nerds, a sacral manifesting generator. This podcast is for women who want to be happier in their marriage as they navigate their journey through motherhood, even if you're like me and you weren't shown how while growing up. Inside, we're going to be talking about breaking generational cycles when it comes to how to handle conflict in healthy ways, redefining motherhood your way, and prioritizing your well being because here we believe that women don't have to sacrifice their happiness to be a great mom. And a quick note to mamas listening with kids around you may want to pop your earbuds in because nothing is left unsaid on this show, which means there may be times where something I say isn't meant for little ears. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Marriage and Motherhood podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about something that you likely may have or are currently experiencing, and that's feeling disconnected in your marriage. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, and then I'm going to share with you about how you can do some things together and on your own to feel reconnected. Okay. Now, my first question is how often have you wished that you felt more connected with your partner, but then the tiredness kicks in, right? The overwhelming feeling of like, oh my gosh, all the things that need to happen in order for that to happen, right? And so you tell yourself, ah, maybe tomorrow, like today's not a good day. I'm too tired. Maybe tomorrow, maybe over the weekend, maybe next week, maybe. And then next thing you know, a lot of time has passed, right? You're thinking maybe when things get easier, maybe when the schedule isn't so hectic, maybe when you're at rock bottom and you don't know how things got so bad to the point where you don't even know how to be together anymore outside of being co-parents. Yikes. With how normal it is for couples to feel disconnected in their marriage after kids, it almost seems like a rite of passage that a lot of us go through. But it's not, right? This is not a hazing process. What it really is, is an invitation to become more intentional and to become a better prioritizer, okay? Like our kids are not like, have you ever seen the movie Boss Baby? Our kids are not like little boss babies who come out gen- like geniuses that are really trying to manipulate us, right? They're just doing their own thing. And it's not like they're actively trying to keep you away from your partner or they're actively trying to soak up all of your time so that your marriage falls apart in the process of you raising them. That's not what's happening, right? So when I say that it's an invitation to become more intentional, what I mean by that is it's an invitation for you to actively choose to do things because you want to, because it gets you closer to whatever your goal might be. And in this case, a really connected marriage, right? One that you enjoy and can see yourself with your spouse growing old together, still being in love, still having fun like besties who also happen to be husband and wife, right? You're not letting life live you like you're on autopilot where every day blends into the next and you can't tell what progress you've made towards anything because you've just been sustaining, right? Or as others would call it, you were surviving instead of thriving, right? I've definitely been there, especially in the earlier days of motherhood where it was like, what day is it? How is it that my baby's five months old and I feel like I've done nothing to, to like, to speak on other than like, yes, it's a big deal that I, 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 uh, kept a baby alive. But like, other than that, what did I move the needle on in my own personal life? Right. My marriage felt 
not great because we were fighting more, right? And I didn't even remember who I was. I didn't even realize I lost myself. Like, how did I get to this place? And all of a sudden, my baby's like no longer in a newborn. If this is you, or if you're curious if this is you, if you're like, oh, this is so normal, I don't even realize my marriage is disconnected. Here are six signs that I notice in a lot of marriages that show you that it is actually disconnected and that more attention could really benefit the relationship, okay? So the first sign of your marriage being disconnected is you each go do your own thing after the kids are in bed. So once they're in bed, you're either in separate rooms or you're in the same room, but there's no talking going on. There's no bonding going on. You're just either each on your phones, maybe someone's working, maybe someone's reading, and this is a daily occurrence. This is just the routine that you two have fallen into. The second sign is you regularly go to bed at different times. You're just doing your own thing, almost like you're living life in parallel rather than together. There's no getting ready for bed together. There's no pillow talk. There's no cuddling. It's just, I go to bed when I'm tired and then they go to bed when they're tired. And, and that's that. We just happen to share the same bed, right? And then along the same vein, you're not regularly having sex. There's the physical connection is fizzled out. There's minimal flirting, if any, right? It's almost like you're just platonic friends who also happen to have kids together that you're raising together. And you don't flirt with each other anymore, which goes hand in hand with that. There's no playfulness. There's no winking uh, across the room for, uh, towards each other. There is no, you know, there's no um, touching while you're passing each other. There's no like corny flirting going on. The next one is you don't make time to hang out without kids. Everything is around the kids. Everything is family centered. And once the kids are in bed, that's it. You guys each do your own thing, which means also no dates, no trips together. Everything is with the family. And last but not least, Sign number six, you only talk about the kids and the house. Okay, so those are the six signs that your marriage is disconnected. And if you resonate with any of these, just know that it's completely normal. But also, if you've been with me for a while, you know that we don't go for normal here because normal does not necessarily mean healthy or even desirable. It's just what ends up happening. And if you're not wanting to create a life or marriage that is just a, as a result of life happening and you want to create a marriage on purpose, then this is your wake up call to recognize like, oh, I didn't realize that that's what was happening. Like, yes, we were doing it, but I didn't realize that that actually showed that something needs to change. Okay, so here's your loving alarm clock here to let you know that some work needs to be done. And that's okay, right? Awareness is always the first step. Now, why do marriages get disconnected? Okay, the three most common reasons why you're not connecting is because time, energy, and not getting your needs met. Okay, time, energy, and not getting your needs met. There is so much going on every day between all the kids' stuff, your own stuff, what the house needs. If you work, then whatever those responsibilities are, right? You've got that stuff. And then there's your family, your friends who also need your time. And with your energy, it's very exhausting to wear so many damn hats, but especially the mom hat. You're guiding the kids, you're teaching them, you're trying to be a better parent than your parents were. 
right? You're trying to break those cycles and, and be more of a conscious parent. And if you have young ones, then, you know, they're constantly touching you, asking you for something, asking a million questions, trying to tell you a million never ending stories, <laughs> needing you to comfort them. Maybe they're fighting with their siblings all the time. You have to like, you have to play mediator. I feel like that's me today. <laughs> They're constantly doing things that might hurt them, maybe. And so you're like always keeping an ear out to see if you need to save them in any way and keep them out of danger. None of which we're in control of or have the ability to predict, right? So we're just like always, we always have a heightened sense of awareness because of the unpredictable nature that is our children right? And we're responsible for them. And so we take that responsibility pretty seriously. And then last but not least, not having your needs met. This could mean a lack of motivation on your part to put in any effort, or perhaps like you're hurt and you just don't feel like doing anything extra until they do something. You're like, no, I've done enough. I, I'm not getting what I need, so why should I give you what you need? Whatever the reasons are that you have, the fact is, is that if you want to feel more connected with your partner, you're going to have to find a way to move through them because waiting hardly ever does anyone good. Like just waiting around, waiting around for someone else to do something. That is very much living passively rather than actively, right? We've got to sit in the driver's seat sometimes and really take life by our own hands instead of just waiting. Almost like when I think of waiting, I almost feel like it, it, it's, it's very similar to like the fairy tales, the fairy tale way of doing things where the princess is just waiting. Whether it's Cinderella and she's waiting for, for the prince to finally you know, come to the house and let her try on that glass slipper. But we're not that kind of woman. We're not. We are independent. We are go-getters. And we empower ourselves with choice, right? This doesn't mean to, like, be controlling in any way. That is never, 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 never the answer, right? But there are things that we can do that influence the situation, okay? That, that can motivate our partners to play along, right? And then there's things that we do that can demotivate them, that can have them putting up their walls because everything we do impacts everyone around us. Everything we do has a consequence, whether it's positive or negative, right? It's like something that we teach our kids all the time. When you touch the fire, it burns you. When you yell at your friends, they don't want to play with you anymore, right? Like there are consequences to every choice that we make. And so bringing it back to being intentional, we have to think, okay, well, if things aren't happening. Am I going to be okay with feeling this way for the foreseeable future? Or am I going to do something about it? Am I going to try things? Am I going to do everything in my power to change my experience of this? That way you're not sitting there passively as if you're one of those damsels in distress in those fairy tales. Instead, you're like, no, I'm going to be the main character of my own story, and I'm going to take this into my own hands and do things that support me getting closer, making progress towards my goal. So when you're ready to put in effort to connect, here are ways that you can do that, okay? There's two different categories I'm going to be sharing ideas under. The first one is doing things together. And the second one is doing things as an individual. Okay. So together you can 
set up a weekly night where you get just spend time together. Whether it's 20 minutes for starters, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, whatever your situation is that's doable. And you guys can do something you both enjoy. Maybe you take turns choosing what you guys do. Uh, maybe you're trying something new together and you're exploring. Like cooking a new recipe, trying out a new video game, or uh, even playing a game like that's, that is familiar but adding a fun twist to it, right? Or doing something that, that reminds you of feeling like a kid and adding in that like carefree childlike fun into your relationship again. Another thing is have sex at least once a week. Or if you're more spread out than that, just anything more than what you're doing now, right? Once a month, once every other week, whatever is a stretch for you to start building on that, okay? Even if it means scheduling it, okay? Because while spontaneous sex was a thing before kids, and it, it was great. It felt fun and exciting. Fact is, is that we have a hell of a lot more going on now. We have less time. We've got less energy. And you got to kind of just work with what you've got. You have to work with whatever situation you're in. And if you want to ensure that your physical connection is strong, then it's going to benefit your relationship to get it on the priority list and schedule it, okay? And then also, ladies, be mindful of when your menstrual cycle's happening. Work around that. Another way is lean on your village so that you can go on a date away from the kids at least once a month or maybe once every other month, whatever is doable for you, okay? Because there is no substitute for having alone time together when you're not worried about what the kids are doing or secretly listening to what's going on in the background, like who's fighting, is anyone breaking anything, is anyone getting into stuff that they're not supposed to, right? When you know that they're being taken care of by a trustworthy caretaker, you get to like breathe out a sigh of relief knowing they're well taken care of and you get to just focus on the present moment the person you're with, yourself. And then if this is an issue where you find yourselves always talking about your kids together when you're alone and it takes up the whole conversation, make it a rule to not do that. And then you could even add a fun twist is whoever brings up the kids first has to whatever, right? Buy the next drink or I don't know. You can make it sexual if you wanted to. <laughs> You can do whatever you want, okay? Whatever floats your boat. Next and last thing for the together one is depending on your village, right? And your comfort level, go away on a trip, right? Go on a kid-free trip, whether it's just you two or a trip with your friends, but without your kids, all right, this is a really great way to remember what it's like to be you guys as a couple, pre-kids, boyfriend and girlfriend, or husband and wife, right? You two were probably really different before having kids, before you were slapped around with so much responsibility, okay? Before you were forced to grow up a really, really fast because of all the choices and the things you had to to um, do and, and all of that stuff, okay? Before you started putting yourself lower and lower on the list and your marriage lower, 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 go do that, right? And, and if that's a stretch, start by going out with friends just like for an extended period of time. Maybe that's like your time as a couple, because that adds a fun dynamic to your experience too. So there's fun in going on dates and then there's fun in going out as a couple with your friends. 
These are all experiences that are missed out on when you're constantly with your family. Okay. Now, the second thing that I mentioned was that there are things that you can do on your own, right? There are things that you can do in, as an individual to support the connection in your marriage after kids. First thing is compliment your partner more. Do you notice something that they did well? Say it. If you notice they look especially good, say it. Don't assume that they know what you're thinking. Express it. Maybe it can help them feel really good or help them feel noticed. Think about how you experience compliments. Maybe they enjoy the same or maybe not, depending on their love language, right? Speak their love language. The next one is ask questions. Not an interrogating or badgering type of way, right? But start to ask questions that really show that you care about what's going on in their life, like work, their hobbies, their friends, their interests, their childhood, or their dreams. Show interest in them as an individual. Don't just talk about, okay, we've got this like house project going on, so how are we gonna do that? Or, hey, Johnny needs to get picked up from school and then Sarah has soccer. So like, how are we splitting this up, right? I'm not talking about that, okay? I'm talking about really opening up conversations about them as an individual and really showing that you see them more than being just a dad, more than just being a parent, okay? And then the next one is leave post-it notes, expressing your gratitude or say it verbally. Okay. So this is like another flair of complimenting, but really just expressing, Hey, I'm really glad I get to do life with you. I'm, I feel so lucky. Okay. Some form of gratitude. Next one is make a special effort to touch them more. If your partner is a man, men tend to be more physical or more physically driven than women are. But even then women like to, to feel touch, right? It feels nice to be noticed. So smack them on the butt, be playful, massage them, give them head scratches as they fall asleep, sit on their lap, sit close to them so the so like the sides of your legs are touching hold hands when you're walking do something to recognize or acknowledge that they're there instead of just walking by each other like your two ships sailing through the night with no contact actually here's a fun fun challenge for you next time you're in public and you notice a couple I want you to pay attention to what you admire in other couples. Take a look at their body language. Take a look at how they interact with each other. Take a look at what they're doing and ask yourself if you're willing to do the same. Because we can get really complacent with how things are in the relationship as it is today because we have all the excuses. Well, I do, don't do this because of this and I do this because of that, right? But let's strip away all the excuses and just be like, well, if I had the relationship that I wanted, it would look like this. I would act like this. Then go do those things. Okay. And uh, another one, two more. Check in on your partner at the end of the day to see how they're doing. Ask how you could support them. Because even though by now you probably know your partner really, really well. We're all changing every single day, every single day. So it's dangerous to assume that you always know what's happening with your partner, that you always know how they feel because a lot goes unsaid. Same for you to them as well, right? There's a lot going on in your head and just assume that there are things that you don't know because maybe they don't want to burden you with it because things are stressful or they just process things internally and, and don't think to share it unless someone asks them. Okay. And 
depending on the human design, that that really plays out in how they're meant to be asked and how they're meant to share. So I'm going to have to do an episode about human design. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> and if you're not aware of what human design is, it is an energetic and a self-awareness tool based on Eastern and Western astrology, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay. So it's not it's not like the Enneagram or Myers-Briggs personality assessments. It's not self-assessed. This is all based on the planetary alignments of when you were born. Okay, so like the time you were born, the city you were born in, and uh, the day that you were born. Okay, so it's pretty, pretty specific. Anyway, that that's for another episode. <laughs> the last thing is be your own person. No one likes a stage five clinger, okay? Now, I get why you might think, oh, we're, we're feeling disconnected. We need to spend more time. And also, I don't know your situation. So if you're already spending a decent amount of time together, spending more time together may actually harm your connection depending on how the time is being spent, okay? Space is good for relationships. Okay. It's kind of like, kind of like the Goldilocks situation. You want, you want to be together, but not too much together. And you want space, but you don't want too much space. (laughs) And that's all dependent on what both of you need individually and what supports the relationship. Okay. So I cannot tell you what that looks like. You guys just have to figure it out as a couple, what that looks like. But when there's space, okay, you actually come back together having more to talk about, okay, because you're off doing your own thing. You've got hobbies, you've got your friends, you've got your separate life. And then when you come back and hang out, you're like, oh my gosh, this happened. Or, ooh, look, I got to do this. Look what I made. Look what I did. I found out this, right? Versus if you just spend all day, every day with each other, you literally have nothing to talk about because they were there. (laughs) How interesting is that? It's not. Okay. So go do your own thing. Go hang out with your friends. Go have fun. All right. This will bring so much more life into your marriage than you think. And like I said before, more time doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get closer, okay? So you have to be really intentional about how you're spending time together and also making sure that each of you have space to live your own life. Take this and try on some stuff, okay? Try it out. See what it does for your connection. And part two of this is actually going to be about how to have the energy to connect with your partner after kids. Because that's probably the biggest thing that really stops us from going through with the planning. All right. I hope this was helpful for you and I hope you're having an incredible day. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message. I'm here to help you. And if you're wanting help with this, if you want help with getting your marriage back on track, I'm here for you. Okay. Shoot me a DM, book a call with me, whatever you prefer, and let's get your marriage back on track because you deserve your happily ever after. And when you are happy, everyone around you is positively impacted, right? You feel better. Your kids feel better. Your marriage feels better. Everything is better. Okay. And you want to make sure that your kids are learning from your marriage in a good way when it comes to what they're taking in as, oh, this is how relationships work, right? And I bet that you want to feel proud about what you're sharing. So if you're having trouble with any of that, I'm here for you. And that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you do end up trying any of these things and how it goes. And I will catch you here next week. Bye.
If you like this podcast, I invite you to reach out to work together because how things are right now doesn't have to be how things are for the rest of your life. I'm here to support you in identifying what small shifts you can make so you can improve your communication and connection with your husband while creating a fulfilling life. This means getting specific feedback for your unique life and relationship so that you can focus your effort on what actually creates more joy and connection in your life. Thank you so much for listening to the Marriage and Motherhood Podcast. I hope that this episode helped you deepen your relationship with your husband and more importantly, with yourself. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a second to leave a review. See you back here next week. Bye.